everybody, this is TRC15 Plays, and today we're going to play the demo of The Letter, a visual novel, a horror visual novel. Now, I'm not really much of a horror gameplay person, but this kind of piqued my interest when I saw it, so uh, it's available for like Windows and Mac, so that's why I'm able to play this, so this is going to be interesting, so here we go. Oh, Jesus. Oh, man, there's jump scares. <laughs> oh, boy. My heart rate's already increased. <laughs> oh, sorry. Emerald Mansion. It was built for Lord William and Lady Elizabeth Emerald of Luxembourg, humble ambassadors of peace and beloved by their people. Both were well known for their compassion and generosity, never failing to extend a helping hand to anyone in need. Under their influence and wealth, what was once a small sleepy village grew to be a prosperous and bustling town. However, the seasons of joy eventually ended when the good nobles perished at the hands of a great plague. Their riches and legacy were henceforth passed on to their only child, Lady Charlotte Emerngard. Excuse me for the background noise, my dog is with me. <laughs> the mansion has stood since the 1620s, a witness to a very long history of joy and pain. After Lady Charlotte committed suicide, the great house was eventually left uninhabited. Oh wow, that's a really nice atmosphere. Actually, oh my gosh, okay. And that is when it began. Surrounding villagers spoke of seeing and hearing unearthly things, of cries and howls that filled the nights and heresy of a mysterious woman roaming the hollowed halls aimlessly. People who dared enter its walls were simply never heard from again. Even after 400 years, these stories remain much like the house itself. Whispers about the once great house, its legend, and its curse still fall upon the villagers' ears. In spite of this, the current owners are convinced that these stories are nothing more than a hoax. With little regard for the truth, they had Briar Real Realty Corporation place the property back on sale. Like Pandora's box, the secret that lies inside awaits to be discovered by brave souls. No matter what happens, take care not to be consumed by the curse. Good luck. Isabella. Hello? Isabella? Are you there? Where are you? A familiar jittery voice comes from the other end. Oh, hey Rose! I'm at St. Goretti High. What's the matter? What do you mean, what's the matter? It's the mansion, silly. I'm here and you're late. Jeez, we're on shift together. You promised! Oh my god, please don't tell me you forgot. You were planning on leaving me to check this place out on my own, weren't you? You chickened out! Calm down. You know I take my promises seriously. I'd like to believe that. So hurry up and get here. This place is huge. A bit too quiet since no one's lived here since, like, forever, but beautiful nonetheless. Why are you so surprised? This isn't the first time you've been there. I know. I just wish I could live in a place like this. It really takes my breath away. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Not after the rumors that say it's haunted. Jeez, never mind those rumors. Ghosts aren't real after all. And even if they are, which they are not, they can't do anything. They're nothing but spirits. You don't know that. They might be listening or watching right now, and they might not be happy with you enough to curse you. No offense, sweetie, but that's a bit of a stretch. Uh, believe it or not, it's better to be careful. Right. 
You know, not every property we sell will end up with a dead body stuffed in a sofa. And I think that mansion is where we'll likely find another one. I can feel it. That was one time, Isabella! Loosen up! Wait, just get here ASAP, please. I'm getting bored being here on my own. Fine, fine. Let me just finish up here. I'll be right there soon. Okay, see you. Bye! I can respond. Rose, still charming as ever. Who was that? I look up from my phone to see Rebecca. Becca, giving me a questioning look. Oh, that? It's just Rose. Rose? The one you said who trained you for your job back when you started? You're working together again? Just for this property. We've been scoping out that big mansion down Anselm Village after the renovations. Today is sort of its grand opening to the public. The RC wants to give it one last check before we let potential buyers tour it this afternoon. Wait, mansion? That big spooky one you've been telling everyone about? Didn't you keep saying how it just gave you the creeps? You actually went there? And you're going back? Well, I did promise Rose I wouldn't ditch her. And besides, a job is a job. Gotta do what you gotta do to make a living. <laughs> My mouth. Rebecca Rebe lets out a soft chuckle. What's so funny? Nothing. It's just that I didn't expect you to say that. Coming from you, it sounds so out of character. I mean, no offense, but you've been freaking out about the place being creepy ever since you got assigned to it. Cursed rumors and all. I honestly thought you'd back out. Not all the time. I could really use a huge amount of cash right now, and this is just the fastest way to get it. Plus, listen to this. Briar Realty wants it sold as soon as possible, and the agent who lands the deal is going to get a huge bonus. They never give bonuses like that. Getting that would make life so much easier. They're desperate, I'm desperate, it's perfect. A sympathetic look crosses her face. You know, if you're really in urgent need of money, you could have just asked me. Or Ashton, who we can always let you borrow, and you can pay us back whenever. I have to keep myself from groaning out loud. In the years I've known her, I can already tell what to expect once she has that expression. Becca! I've noticed that you've been living off instant noodles these past few weeks. She crosses her arms and grimaces at the thought. Her voice slightly rises as she begins to scold me. Instantly, I'm reminded why Becca excels at teaching boisterous teenagers. Stop eating junk! They're cheap, but they're not good for you. You'll definitely end up in the hospital if you keep at it. Hey! I eat other things too. I fold my arms across my chest, mimicking her posture and giving her the best frown I can muster. The same one I'd use with my younger siblings when they're being difficult. Instead, she raises an eyebrow at me. That's not going to work on me. And I saw it when you were cleaning your flat last week. The instant noodle cups outnumber everything else. You're just exaggerating. Did you even see what's in my cupboard yet? I'm not just living on instant noodles alone. I've got canned beans, peas, tuna, ham, and even hamburgers in there. Becca's wrinkling her nose by the time I get to the end of the small list. She even went a little green on the last one. Well, I mean, it makes sense. You're, you're, you have hamburger in your cupboard? Oh geez, okay. I would have laughed a little at that if I didn't know it would only lead to more reprimands from her. Aren't those the same ones you won from the grocer's raffle more than a year ago? Ew. Oh, I sincerely hope you're checking the date stamps on those things before eating them. I don't want a repeat of last year. What happened last year? In any case, those are still not exactly healthier choices, Belle. She shakes her head, possibly laughing at some funny distant memory. When she looks up, I immediately brace myself. More words from her. Sometimes it's just better to let Becca talk until she's out of things to say. But when she turns her attention back to me, there is only warmth in her smile. <sighs> what am I going to do with you? She says this more to herself than me, her voice shifting to something kinder, even motherly, if I'm looking for the exact word. 
I hope you know that it's impossible not to worry about you when you're like this. You don't have to keep eating the same thing. I already told you before. You're always free to reheat food in my fridge. Thanks, Becca. I really appreciate it, but you don't need to keep babying me. You've been taking care of me since after I moved here. You have to take a break sometime. And before you ask again, no. You know I'm not a fan of borrowing money. And I'm not going to ask you to give me what you earned hard for yourself. Ugh, you and your pride. But suit yourself. The offer stays on the table, though. If only to get her to drop the topic. But I'm pretty certain I will never take that offer. Ever. It has nothing to do with pride. I've simply seen plenty of times how friendships can take a turn for the worse. Just because of a few unpaid debts. I don't want something like that to happen between me and Becca. We may argue about a lot of small petty things, but she already feels like a real sister to me. I don't want to lose that friendship over something so trivial. Becca's movements when she takes a quick glance at something behind me snaps me out of my thoughts. Well, enough chit chat. Lunch is ending, and my students will be back any minute. We can catch up later. Good luck with your clients. You better treat us to lunch or something if you get that sale. You bet! With a small smile, she returns to her desk and begins sifting through the pages of a rather thick history book. She's probably working on next week's lesson plan. Or trying, at least. Her eyes are distant, and she doesn't seem too attentive to whatever is on the page. <coughs> As if she heard my thoughts, Becca starts coughing heavily. Her hand hastily goes to her mouth to stifle the sounds. Ah, this is why I pre precisely why I followed her here. For someone who makes a habit of, out of worrying for, about other people, Becca sure forgets how to take care of herself. Hey, you sure you can manage on your own? I mean, you're still a bit feverish. Ah, oh, hush, dear. Don't you worry about me. I'll just drink some medicine and I'll be right as rain. flat look. She has had a cold for a couple days now, something about the strange weather not agreeing with her lately. And despite my advice to take the week off and rest, I found her apartment empty when I dropped by this morning. She even left the medicine her doctor prescribed. Look who's being stubborn now. You shouldn't even be working right now. <laughs> Seriously, you big baby. I'll be fine. For now, just go to work and stop making that rose girl wait for you. I'll call you if I still feel bad, and you can come pick me up if it makes you feel any better. She offers me a reassuring smile, and I can only sigh. Why do I even bother? There's no stopping her once she has decided on something. Defeated, I reach inside my bag and pull out the same bottle of medicine she left earlier. She looks at it warily when I place it in front of her. Unfortunately for her, this is the one thing I'm not letting her have her way. All right, but don't forget what the doctor said. Drink this on time. I'll see you later, okay? There's an amused gleam in her eyes when she shifts them back to me. <laughs> Look who's playing the mother hen now. Rebecca! <laughs> okay, okay. I won't tease anymore. I'll make sure to drink it, Mom. Before I can retort, she casts another look at the clock. I take that as a sign to finally end the conversation and my short visit. With a small wave, I leave her alone to her classroom and her thoughts. I hail a passing taxi to take me to the property as soon as I leave the school grounds. The mansion is some ways out of the countryside, but I don't have trouble giving the driver directions. Apparently everyone in Luxembourg City knows of it, including every bit of rumor surrounding the place. In fact, just the mention of its name is enough to, for locals to give you cautious sidelong glances. I learned that the hard way when the first time I commuted there, and it only boosted my belief that there was something more to the house. Okay, let's take a pause for a second. Look, Zarbucks Coffee, and the, oh, there's there's our company that we work for, Briar Realty Corporation. Briar, oh yeah, uh, that. <laughs> The library, there's a hotel, Sleepy Sheep Inn, oh that's cute, that's a cute name, Sir Antiques, 
Mrs. Flowers. Oh, the animation. Oh, look, the clouds are moving. Oh, that must be a hospital. Look, all the little people. Just the animations of walking. Ooh, what's this? Journal. Undiscovered journal entry. Oh, profiles. So, we're playing as this character, Isabella. Yay. Maria Isabella Grace Cruz Santos. She was born on May 28th, is a Gemini, 26 years old. She is 5'2. Dang, she's taller than me. I'm short. <laughs> Occupation, she's an estate agent. She's Filipino. Oh, wow. Uh, Roman Catholic. Uh, she's a fine arts undergraduate. Wow. Wait, you could be a real estate agent with the with the fine arts undergraduate education? Well, I guess you could. I'm, I don't know anything. I don't know anything about that stuff. So <laughs> she likes cinnamon rolls, dogs, food. I thought she said dog food for a second. <laughs> but it says dogs, food, police procedural dramas, and teleseries? Ser oh, teleseries. Okay. I couldn't recognize it because it has a Y instead of an I. Teleseries. Comedies, karaoke. She is the third child among seven, daughter of a laundry woman and a jeep. I can't read that. Jiminy driver. She want. She went to a public school and was an average student, but took art. Uh, took to art easily. Eventually, she pursued a degree in fine arts, as encouraged by her father. However, when the man was diagnosed with terminal illness, she had to stop st studying to make money. It was Isabella's aunt who helped her get work overseas in order to earn more money than a local job could get her. Excuse me. Rose Cooper became her mentor as soon as she started as an agent at BRC. It has been five years since she met her neighbor, Rebecca. She met Ashton during an unfortunate incident involving her first sale at Devlin Court, and later, Zachary threw him. Well, that's interesting. Nothing, 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 nothing. We don't even know much about Rebecca yet. Oh, that's interesting. <gasps> Look, cupcakes! Oh no, sorry, those are cinnamon rolls. What am I saying? Cinnamon rolls. <laughs> huh. Interesting. What's this? <gasps> the help, help, help letter. Okay, so there's nothing there. Ooh, what's this? Relationship. Oh, dang. We got relationship bars. I don't know how I feel about these. Ah. Interesting, you can see their faces. Very, um, temperamental. Okay. Uh, I learned that the hard way, blah, 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 blah. There's something more to the house. Okay. Even the news of it being renovated and placed back up in the market has caused quite a stir. Thankfully, it died down a few weeks later. The place would have become a lot harder to sell otherwise. I avert my eyes from the window once the buildings shrink in the distance. We get a glimpse of the countryside soon, although a quick glance at my watch tells me we're still a few minutes away from our destination. Might as well get some work done. Rose did ask me to review the mansion's documents. I already looked them over last night, but you never know when things may go wrong. Life has, o has ways of messing things up like that. Halfway through reading the papers, my phone rings again. I pick it up without looking, neatly tucking it between my ear and shoulder. It's probably just Rose again anyways. Rose? Guess again. Whoa, Vito. Ash. Oh, boys. Bingo. Hey, <laughs> what's up? Just checking if you're still cool later this evening. You mean that thing with Zach? Yeah. He even called in the middle of the night just to remind me. No, don't worry. I didn't forget. I'll cool. I'll see you later. Sorry. What time to get off? Around 5, 6 p.m.? I don't know. It's the first day of the Ermengarde Mansion's open house, and we're expecting quite a number of potential buyers. I'll be booked the whole afternoon. Ermengarde Mansion? You know, the big Jacobean mansion at Anselm Village? I'm on my way there right now, actually. Jacobean Mansion? What's Jacobean? What does that even mean? I need- I want to look this up real quick. Here, wait, let's see. 
Jacqueline, huh? Jacqueline, Jacqueline. Cause it seems quite interesting. What's a Jacobine? Jacobean era. The Jacobean era was the period in English and Scottish history that coincides with the reign of James the... I can't read Roman numerals. <laughs> um, a blank of... I don't even know. Of Scotland, who also inherited the crown of England in 1603 as James I. The Jacobean era succeeds the Elizabethan era and precedes the Caroline era. The term Jacobean is often used for the distinctive styles of Jacobean architecture, visual arts, decorative arts, and literature, which characterize that period. Thanks, Wikipedia! Hmm. Quite interesting. Lots of, um, capes? And, uh, short... Clothing. Shorter clothing. Huh? Huh. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. I know which time of the period that is. It looks familiar. Okay. Um, you know the big Jack Bean mansion? Okay. On your own? Yeah, well, Rose is already there, but yeah. I see. Looks like the scaredy cat finally toughened up. No. No, I haven't. Shut up! Hush chuckles, and I could, can't help but roll my eyes upon hearing. <laughs> I'll see you later. Drop me a call when you're done. I'll see if I can pick you up. Whatever! Bye! Stupid asshole. Always teasing me whenever he sees a chance. I'll show him who's tough. Yeah, totally. <laughs> oh. October 21st. Ooh. Updated. It takes a few more minutes before I finally reach the infamous mansion. I have to admit, the entire property does look wonderful from the outside. Yet, despite all this, it does not- It does nothing to hide that something is just... Wrong. The surrounding area is unusually silent, and the only rustling of the leaves can be heard as the occasional breeze passes. Oh my god, the sounds are giving me chills. <laughs> um, hmm. While Anslem Village is just a few miles away, everybody keeps their distance on purpose. Perhaps out of fear? The horror of falling under the mansion's curse? Somehow, it makes me feel sad. The lack of immediate human presence is just makes this place all the more eerie than it has any right to be. It, if it's uncanny in broad daylight, I can't imagine how this place looks at night. Who planning to go inside that place, Missy? Oh my gosh, that voice is Um. Yes, sir. The voice nearly makes me jump out of my skin. Without completely taking my eyes away from the house, I give the driver a confused nod. A beat passes while I wait for him to say more, but his only answer is a non-committal hum. Belatedly, it occurs to me that he must have been waiting for my payment. I mentally slap myself for spacing out and promptly hand him the fare with an apologetic look. I expected him to leave as soon as I've paid, but there's a hesitant expression on him, as if something hasn't been said yet. Is there something wrong? Look, Missy, I'm sure you've heard what the people are telling everyone about that place. Nobody likes to be disturbed when they're at peace, and I'm pretty sure whatever they say is in their house doesn't want to either. I admit they did a good job fixing it up, but there must have been a reason why even distant relatives of the family who used to own the house never lived in there despite inheriting it. No wonder they wanted to get rid of it. M maybe they just didn't like it? You never know. He drives off after, but what he has said has left a foreboding feeling in my gut. I breathe out a heavy sigh as I approach the house. After hearing some enough of the rumors, I should have expected the conversation to take that turn. But I'm already here. Backing out is completely out of the question. But is it really? Just say, ah, uh, you know, I can, I, can, I can work a couple other jobs selling different houses instead of this one in particular. You know what? Let's, let's, let's look at the journal. What does it say? 20, October 21st. Wait, we skipped two days. But well, we skipped two days. We skipped two days. This bothers me. We skipped two days. 
Okay. Before going to the Urban Guard Mansion, Isabella Santos dropped by St. Goretti High School to check on Rebecca Gales. The former reminded the latter to take her flu medicine before leaving. On the way to the mansion, Isabella received a phone call from Ashton Frey, reminding her of Zachary Steele's movie premiere that night. Oh, that's very interesting. Wonder what type of movie it is. Well, there's a book of history here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Duh. Because of... Rebecca. Okay. Makes sense. Do we have any new for Ashton? No? Or Zachary? No? Oh, I guess we have to meet them in person, huh? Well, even if we met... No, we didn't even... We met Rebecca in person, but we didn't get anything for her. Maybe, maybe, maybe in the full game, they, like, you play each character? Maybe it, like, affects how you live and how you die? I don't know. I, I, I kind of, like, briefly read up on this, but not really. I'm kind of going in here blind. Whew. Okay. Is there a save button? Oh, there's a branching tree. <gasps> Whoa. Okay. That's cool. Backlog. Save. Should we save? Yeah, save here. Save here. Save here. Uh, journal, relationship, branching tree. Okay. Okay. It's not like I have a choice anyway. Wait, you don't have a choice? But it's your. Well, I guess if you don't want to lose your job, I guess it makes sense. If I want to get that bonus and commission one way or another, I've got to sell this property. So. Is your dad still alive? Is he dead? Is that why you have to make all this money? Or like you're not paying your rent on time? Cause you're neighbors with Rebecca and apparently I think you guys are in apartments of some sort, flats of course. Hmm, questioning. The door is ajar and when I get to it, however, while well, my own copy of the keys dangle uselessly in my hand. That was a really weird phrased sentence. Rose must have left it open when she arrived. That's weird. We may be the only people here this early, but I've never known her as someone careless. October 21st, Friday. The Mansion Foyer. Entering what greets me inside leaves me gaping. They've cleaned every corner, waxed the floor, dusted the antique, searched every nook, cranny, and crevice, and made it spick and span. Wow, they had modernist art back then? Huh. Tree! Huh. That doesn't look very Jacoby fashion, you know. From what I've seen. She's very pale. Slendor. Pretty. Usually, um, when I see these type of mansion types, like, in in films or games. Oh, look, there's a stained glass window. Um, this is, like, the kitchen area or butler's quarters anyways. And then this one is just, like, uh, servant's quarters. So it's, like, back here underneath the staircase and stuff. I don't know. Just, you know, read lights, a lot of light novels and such. You just, like, get that vibe. She kind of looks like, um, what's her name? From Steven Universe, his mom. Can't remember her name right now. <laughs> he looks like, um, not Leon, was it? He, he, he's he, very princely. Kind of, oh, the light radiance is so nice. Um, yeah, big hair. Big wig? Oh. Isaac Newton? No, I was kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, but his character looks kind of familiar, like yeah, a lot of the archetypes I've seen. She reminds me of another painting I've seen before, or well, not pa a real painting. It might have been. It might be a real painting, but like seeing things I've seen in other video games or um, movies. Look, it's the sky. Ooh, more sky. What is this supposed to be? Like a con like a type of a mollusk. That looks like a tentacle, but like cut off the top, like hollow. 
interesting. <clears throat> All for the sake of making the mansion more enticing to the modern day lords and ladies. Oh yeah, I forgot there is in real life there's still uh there's still nobles out there, huh? We just never really think about it. I mean most of the time like their money's run out, I think, right? But no matter how hard they try, the mansion still looks as soulless as ever. Eh, I wouldn't say that. Based off this look, it just looks a bit drab. Like, you know, we just love our Victorian mansions. But Victorian's like a different decade. It's like a couple decades later. Ooh, those exposed beams. Oh, wow. What an attractive thing to look at when, um... You're a modern day buyer. I've been watching too many renovation shows to be honest. Those exposed beams. Whew. <laughs> Open concepty ish. Not really, because this closes it off, but for safety. Safety. Kinda of oh actually, now that I think about it, it kinda of reminds me of like the, the stairwell in like Black Butler. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's a manga and, uh, and an anime. And, like, right here is, like, like, where his, like, parents, like, portrait is. And he's like, hey, take it down, blah, 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 blah. I'm getting off track here. Um, next bit. As though it's going to eat you alive. I've said that very oddly. Oh, wow, it's going to eat you alive. Devil eyes. Okay. If you ask me, they should have just listened to what other people have been telling them and leave this place alone. I mean, there's people who have, like, bulldozed, like, haunted places and just built new places on top. Huh. So, like, the plague caused the curse? Was it the plague that caused the curse? I mean, like, their daughter died from suicide. Erm... Um... I don't know. Huh. It makes you wonder about their family line, too. Because, like, they said that they had, like, inheritors to this place. So, like... They must have had nephews and nieces. Is this, like, the, the daughter? Or is this, like, her mom? Maybe this is her mom and this is her dad. Maybe, maybe... Maybe this is... Her? Their daughter? I can't remember the name of the daughter already. I already forgot. Huh. Anyways, back to the story. Sorry, I keep getting off track. <laughs> I'm a person with ADD. What do you expect? <laughs> um, some things in this world are better left alone, never to be disturbed ever again. Like, like ancient tribal gowns, right? Yeah. I don't know anything. Rose? Hello? Oh, that was a nice echo effect, though. I call out. Rose, I'm here. I'm here. Where are you? My voice echoes softly through the hallways. But if there's carpet, it still echoes? Even with high ceilings? I don't know. <laughs> Silence. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, who am I kidding? In a place this big, I don't think she'll hear me no matter how deafening the silence is. Huh. Really? Hmm. Even somebody who's really, really boisterous? Like, okay. She could be all the way on the other side of the property, property for all I know. Quickly, I reach for my phone and dial her number. Like, your service would work in there? But... The number you have dialed has not been recognized. Please check and try again. What do you mean, has not been recognized? See, I thought so, okay. Like, you can call somebody in here, but not really, because it's, like, old stuff, right? I don't know anything about, like, uh, what do you call them right now? Thinking about it, thinking about it, brain, come on, work, work, work. Waves of some sort? Like, you know, cell tower stuff? I mean, you are, like, in the middle of the countryside, so... Even ATT can't get you out there, bro. International calling? Ha ha ha. What do you mean has not been recognized? We were just talking a while ago. It's not like she was eaten by the house, right? Okay, that's kind of overthinking it, I think. Or 
Or maybe the ghost did hear us talking and spirited her away, right? Oh, the movie spirited away. Right? No, Isabella, don't be ridiculous. She probably just wandered deeper into the house and lost signal or something. I dial her number again, hoping the call will connect this time. I mean, if you can find a signal, right? What type of service do you have? T-Mobile kind of like... <laughs> Where I live, it just sucks. <laughs> but it's okay. I dial her number again, hoping the call will co connect this time. The number you have dialed has not been recognized. Please check and try again. But to no avail. I love the vocabulary, guys. Oh boy! I have a very bad feeling about this. Rose? If you can hear me, please come out! Your, fear, your face of fear also incites fear inside my mind. Come on, Rose! This isn't funny! You know this place gives me the creeps? I'm getting the creeps from your echoey voice. <laughs> no answer. This isn't gonna work. This place is big! She could be anywhere. I need to start looking for her. Uh, maybe she get some friends first, and then do that? But then again, it could be like the horror movies where if you split up. But if you travel in a group, then you're like, Yo, they could protect me, right? Maybe? <laughs> oh, man. I'm living for this already. I just, I, I'm gonna get scared though, for sure. I already got jump scared like in the very beginning of the title sequence. <laughs> this is gonna be a great game. I take a deep breath before venturing deeper into the mansion. <gasps> just kidding. <laughs> Taking a couple steps forward, I notice something move about the grand staircase. Wait, what? What the hell? Rose? Rose, is that you? Girl, if it was Rose, she would come and face you. I don't think she would be one of those types that will be like, Ha ha ha, I jump scared you, lol. Not funny. Not funny. I'm leaving you if you don't come out. Just, just leave. Just leave. My god. Like, why would you just send two agents, right? Well, it's such a huge house, right? You would, you would think. Oh, they're renovating it. Oh, we should probably do last checks in the house. Oh, uh, blah, 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 blah. I, I don't know. <laughs> Not funny. I'm leaving you if you don't come out. Not coming out, huh? Fine. I'm going. Then go. Okay, that's a lie. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, like, maybe try walking out the door and calling her again. Maybe that'll work better. You know, no signal, maybe the house is made of concrete, you know, that type of stuff. Sorry, I'm thinking of gamma rays. Gamma rays, you, you know, really can't go goes to paper. What is it? Beta, beta rays and gamma rays. One can't, one can't go through concrete, and one can't go through paper. Uh, uh, let's see.